it's Deja Yetmir from CrochetEverAfter.com and right now I'm going to show you how to half double crochet from the very beginning. And all that means is I'm going to walk you all the way through your foundation chain and then the first couple rows of your project. That way you know how to insert your hook at every single part of your project. So let's get started. Alright, let's start half double crochet. I'm going to keep a short tail so you can see it easier. Um, if I was working a real project, I would actually make this tail much longer to be able to weave it in. But just for these purposes, so it stays in the picture, I'm going to keep it short. So the first thing I need to do if I'm making a half double crochet is to make my foundation chain. And before that, I need to make a slip knot. So I usually will hold my yarn like this. I do this for my magical adjustable loop and slip knots. So I hold it with my tail on the bottom to the left. I fold down with my right hand and reach through and I grab the yarn that's attached to my ball or skein and pull tight. Now I have a nice sliding slip knot. And I insert that on my hook. I usually keep my tail um, pointed down. Let me get that in the picture. I keep my tail on the bottom side just so that the top so I can yarn over easy. So I'm going to do um, a chain of 11 so that I can create 10 half double crochet rows, 10 stitches for each row, and I'm going to show you how that happens with 11 chains. So I yarn over and then I put my hook down to slide easily through the loop on my hook and create my first foundation chain. I continue yarning over and you'll see my fingers doing stuff as I work. I hold my loop as I yarn over, I do that so that my whole foundation chain doesn't come with me. I yarn over, I grab my foundation chain when I'm going to pull my hook through, and that keeps good tension to keep a good even foundation chain. I keep tension on this portion of the yarn, the working yarn, so that my loop on my hook doesn't get too big. And if I keep it the same size as my shaft, that will also create nice even foundation chains. So all of this stuff is good to keep in mind as you're working. And if you get in the rhythm, it'll become like muscle memory. It'll just be something you do every time and it'll give you good consistent foundation chains every time. Let's see how many I have so far. So to count them, I look at my chain and I count how many V's, the letter V, I have stacked on top of each other because each foundation chain looks like the letter V. So I have my very first one down here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I don't count the loop that's on my hook. That's my working loop. I only count the V's. So I have eight, so I need three more. So I have nine, ten, and eleven. When you're doing a half double crochet, it's a little bit taller than a single crochet and a little bit shorter than a double crochet. So you need two chains to create the proper height. And what that means is every time you turn your work, you're going to chain two. And that's going to make your starting half double crochet not be squished down. So I'm going to show you first how to do the very first one and I'll explain it more when I turn my work on why I create those chain twos. So I've yarn over, you always yarn over to create your half double crochets. You yarn over first and then you're going to work in the third chain from your hook. And it's the third chain that you're working in because you need those first two chains for height. So you count backwards from your hook. One, two, and three. And I always work into the last, the back loop of my foundation chain because it's just faster. Um, depending on what you like, you can do it any way you like, but I always like going just in the back loop. It's much faster for me. So I insert my hook into that back loop only. And then I'm going to yarn over or lay over as I always like to say because it just kind of lays over the top of your hook and you turn your hook to catch it. The yarn I'm talking about. And then I pull up that loop. I pull it up nice and tall so it's even with all my other loops. I don't stop right here when I pull through because then I'll have very squashed stitches. Pull it up nice and tall so I'm parallel with the top of my foundation chain. Then I'm going to yarn over again and to finish my half double crochet, I just pull through all three loops on my hook. And I have now created two 
half double crochets. And you're saying, wait, you only did one. Well, I did the one that I actually did, and I'm counting this chain two as one. Different designers do different things. Some people won't count the chain two, and they'll have you do 12 chains to make 10 stitches, because you'll have 10 stitches and two chains, which will equal 12 chains altogether. I count those two stitches as my first stitch. So when you're reading your pattern, make sure you understand if your chains are counting as your stitches. So I'm going to work into my next foundation chain. I look for my V. I can turn it sideways if I need to find the V. Or I just kind of pull and look for the hole that is created by my back loop. And I insert my hook and yarn over and pull it up. And I pull it up nice and tall. I always put all my loops on my shaft to create even stitches. And I, when I yarn over or pull through any loops on my, that are anywhere actually, I turn my hook down so that they slide easily through. If I don't, let me do this next one here, insert to the next stitch. If I face myself, I'm going to get caught. If I point up, I'm going to get caught. Any which way you turn your hook, you're going to get caught, unless you point it straight down and it slides easily through the stitches. So that's a little trick on how to not get your hook caught in case you're having trouble with that. So you always yarn over before you start your stitch. You insert your hook into your next foundation chain and you can see as I insert my yarn is already looped over my hook. It's already laying over. I don't even really have to do anything. All I have to do is turn it down and catch it then pull up a second yarn over that one is always going to come from back to front no matter what you're doing when you see yarn over it goes back to front and that's more of a true yarn over where it's actually wrapping around your hook so I point down and pull through so you can see again I'm going to push through this and as I push through I'm already laying over my yarn on my hook and I pull that up yarn over and pull through. Now as I work across my foundation chain sometimes your very last foundation chain can be deceiving. It could have gotten um, very tight because it's next to the slip knot. Sometimes it can get really small and hard to tell if it's your if it's one that you're supposed to work in or if it's part of your slip knot. So if you're not sure, if you're confused just stop and count how many stitches you've made so far. Hopefully your pattern will have a stitch count so you know how many you're supposed to have, but if not, take your foundation chain and minus how many stitches it told you to make. So this is having you make nine half double crochets and your chain two counting, so you, have, you should have ten at the end of your row. So right now, let's see how many I have. So I like to start from where my hook is. I would count the V's. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I have the chain two, which is my ninth stitch. So I still have one more, which is this chain right here. So if your chain's really small and you're not sure you're supposed to work into it, just stop and count how many stitches you have. So now I've created ten half double crochets. So now it's time to work into my stitches. So to do that, whenever you have half double crochet, when you turn your work, you need to chain two. And some designers will have you chain two before you turn, or it'll say turn and chain two. It really doesn't matter what you like. Whatever you want to do, whether you turn it before or after, it's just going to create maybe just a little bit different looking chain. It's not a big deal. My designs, I'll count that chain two as my first stitch. And so what that means is I skip my first V. This V right here, I'm going to skip it because this chain two is a part of it. That's going to be my very first stitch of the row. If the designer says the chain twos don't count as a stitch, then you're going to have to work into that V. So you would insert your hook into that hole and look to make sure you only have the two loops that you should have on your hook. Yarn over and pull up and pull through. And what that does is it gives you a little bit of an extra bump because of that chain two. 
So either way, it's not very clean looking because you either have the bump or, as I design usually, is I'll have that chain two as the first one. So I'm going to skip that one and I'm going to put into the next stitch to create my very first actual half double. So it'll either be looking anorexic, very skinny little stitch, or it'll be bulky because you put a stitch and the chain two together. Usually you aren't making just a half double crochet scarf and that's it. So you'll either put an edging on this or you're gonna be using this to seam. So you're not gonna see this first stitch anyways. If you are making just a half double crochet scarf, just single crochet around the entire edge if you don't like the way the edges look. So because I'm counting my chain two as my first stitch, I skipped that first stitch. I worked into the second stitch. Now I'm going to find my next stitch. If you're looking at your work, it almost looks like your loops are facing you. That looks like your V's, doesn't it? Well, that's just the third loop of your half double crochet. You need to turn your work on its end to find your actual V's that you're working into. So you can either look for your next V, which is up here, or you can find the hole, which is quite big, to put your hook into. So you yarn over, insert your hook, and then I'm going to show you this loop right here is the one that's creating this big loop across. I'm sorry, it's actually the first loop. So, as I work across, I'm inserting my hook. I'm always yarning over before I insert my hook. I insert it into the next stitch I come to. As long as your pattern is telling you this, sometimes your pattern will have you do stitch patterns where you skip stitches, but we're just pretending this is a straight half double crochet across under both loops. And then when you get to the end of your row, this is where a lot of beginners can lose stitches very easily. So depending on if the designer said that the chain two counted as a stitch or not is going to dictate where your last stitch goes. So because I count my chain two as a stitch, I still have two stitches left. Even though it looks like I may only have one because you can only see one real defined V. If you're confused and you're not sure you have enough stitches, stop, count your V's. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, which is my chain two. So I have eight and I'm supposed to have ten. So that tells me that I have two more to create. So I go for my last actual half double crochet, and that's going to be my ninth stitch. And then my chain two I need to work into. So to do that, you just put your hook through the top of the chain two, is what your pattern will usually say, or it'll say work into your turning chain, or TCH, some people abbreviate it. You're just picking the top chain, and you can work under one loop or two loops, it's up to you. I usually try to catch two loops, just my personal preference. Oops, now I'm doing a half double, so I need to go all the way through. And I pull through to create my last half double crochet. So just remember to read your pattern, find out if your chain twos are going to count as your first stitch. If it says chain two, and half double crochet in the next 10 stitches, you're not counting your chain two. So if you don't have a stitch count at the end of your pattern, or it's not spelled out for you, you might have to do a little detective work and figure it out. Otherwise, it might just be up to you. It might say chain two, HDC across, or half double crochet across, and gives you no stitch count. Then it's gonna be up to you. So hopefully it will tell you, if not, whatever you prefer, whether you like the bump of the chain two, or if you like the more sparse look over here. That is completely up to you. But that is how you're going to half double crochet in the row from the very beginning.